Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman and I'm thrilled to be chatting with Quincy Larson today. He's a teacher and the founder of freecodecamp.org. How are you, sir? I'm fantastic. How is everything going with you, Scott? Uh, very well. I am just such a fan of everything that you do. I think that we are just like internet friends and we're going to meet up in Portland sometime soon, I hope. But I'm just uh, such a fan of what you're doing. Help me understand what Free Code Camp is and our audience so that they can uh, get excited as well. Absolutely. So Free Code Camp, we're a 501c3 public charity that focuses on a very simple mission, creating free learning resources. That's it. So we create free learning resources, mostly on math, programming, and computer science. And we share those through our website, freecodecamp.org. Uh, we have interactive learning resources. We also have, of course, the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash freecodecamp, which has more than a thousand full length courses on it. And then we have a lot of text-based tutorials, about you know, 11,000 or so. It's, it's closer to like 15,000 if you include all the different translations because we've got a Chinese edition, a Spanish edition, a Portuguese edition. And uh, and then we have like podcasts, like the Free Code Camp podcast that I host each week. So what's the catch though, right? There's got to be a catch. There's got to be somewhere you're going to want my visa card at some point. Like how can this be real? It's too good. So we have a whole lot of really chill human beings in the community who donate to support our charity. So we've got about 8,000 monthly recurring donors who just donate every month and support our mission. That's amazing. Why does this need to exist? Why is it? One could argue that I could just go and, and Google with Bing my way to success and I could find, I could cobble together a little course here and a little YouTube there. And I could, could I just bootstrap my own learning to become a programmer and do my own code camp? Why Absolutely. And, and that's what I did when I learned to code in my 30s. Uh, just as a, I was a teacher, I was a school director and I wanted to learn math, programming, computer science, so I could work as a software developer. And that's basically what I did. I just used freely available learning resources. Um, yeah. Let me, let me share my screen. This right here was a tweet that you put up recently where you said nine years ago, you sat down at your desk and you built the first version of free code camp. And this is like, is this a real picture? This isn't like clip art. This is you and a notepad <laughs> here with the con. This is like you thinking about Free Code Camp. On yeah, that, that's my Bay Area apartment. The only space we had, because it's a Bay Area apartment, it's very small, um, was the closet. So I set up in the closet and got like a little electrical fan in there. And I just would code in there uh, so as not to disturb the wife and kid. That's amazing. What did you do before you made Free Code Camp? So I worked as a school director um, and uh, English as a second language teacher. Uh, I ran schools. And then when I was uh, in my 30s, I decided I really want to learn to program because I automated a lot of the work workflows at our school and it made life so much easier for the teachers and the uh, administrators and the students. And I was like, what if I actually properly learned programming? Like I've already accomplished so much just barely knowing anything, just searching around for, you know, reading tutorials and implementing hacky fixes and stuff like what if I actually knew coding properly? So I, I did that. Uh, I went on this journey of like, I don't know, dozens of hackathons around California. And I started winning them eventually. And then I was able to get a job as a software developer, worked as a software developer for a while, did freelance work. And then I wanted to teach other people how to do this. So uh, I created a bunch of projects around learning programming. None of them stuck. Nobody cared. But eventually, Free Code Camp, people started using it. And ever since, I've just been focused on that. Was that scary though, to like career change? Like, did you know that you had that in you? And is that part of why you made Free Code Camp? Because I assume that there are career switchers, there are people in their thirties and even forties and fifties who are thinking maybe I should be a coder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just was very careful. <laughs> I saved uh, for many years. So I'd make sure that I, I had like a runway of several years where it's like, okay, even in my wife, and this is very important here in the United States. My wife had, a job and we had benefits through her job. So we had health insurance and things like that. Uh, so it, it was risky, but I would say that like, if anybody was in a privileged position to be able to take that chance, it, it was me. And uh, I just, I had faith that I would be able to eventually figure it out and I would eventually be able to work as a developer. And uh, you know, I was vindicated about a year later when I was working as a professional developer. So 
yeah, it, it's definitely something that can happen, but it doesn't need to be risky at all. You don't need to like leave your job or leave school or do anything like that. What I always tell people is just take your time and pace yourself. It, it's more efficient to just learn, you know, 30 minutes, an hour a day for several years than it is to like try to cram everything into like a short period of time. Your brain needs time to assimilate and like process and build those connections, understand how things really work. So I would, I would say like, it did work for me doing this, but it doesn't necessarily need to be done that way. There, there yeah. are easier ways. Hence, you know, free code camp. It, one of the things I wanted to do with free code camp was have a single linear curriculum that covered, you know, started with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, then did, you know, SQL, Linux, and, and then get, and then moved on in a progression of like full stack web development and then scientific computing in kind of a sensible progression where you didn't have to constantly second guess, like, am I learning the right thing? Is this the right resource? We just want to have a single core curriculum that people could progress through with. And, and it's not for everybody. A lot of people do go out and grab various resources off the shelf and use those, but that's fine. Free Code Camp can be one of those many resources. We've got a ton of extracurricular learning resources, like I mentioned, like the thousand video courses on YouTube, for example. Yeah. If I bring my screen up again, I'm at freecodecamp.org. Some of some folks might be listening to this in audio only. And right on the front there, it says, get started. It's free. Keep bringing that up over and over again. This is a charity. It is free. There's no catch. I click on get started. It's free. Right off the bat, you say responsive web design. And you actually have an interesting decision you've made here because I've clicked once and you said start at the beginning and you say certification, certification, certification. I've got responsive web design, JavaScript algorithms. Every one of these things I can learn has a certification at the end. Why do you think that's so important? I think it's important because people want to have some proof of their learning. People ask me all the time, like, oh, is a free code camp certification as valuable as like an Azure certification, for example? And I tell them it's evidence of learning. It's not the same as having like, a certification that is from a, a big tech company. Uh, but, you know, it, it's evidence of having learned. And in the process of earning that certification, you're going to do a tremendous amount of learning. It represents about each, each of those certifications represents about 300 hours of learning. Now, for some people, that might be closer to 150 hours if they're really precocious or if they have some prior experience. But it, it is nice to actually have some deliverable at the end. And these are free verified certifications. Of course, you can go to lots of different websites and uh, even lots of universities and stuff will have certification programs, but generally they're paid. We wanted to emphasize these are free learning resources, free learning certifications, uh, just because it's something that we can do. We have all the infrastructure in place to have these free verified certifications, present them in all these different world languages, You know, have a verified URL that people can put, like a QR code, all that stuff. Because I think... It, it's helpful to have at least some certifications you can put on your LinkedIn or your resume or your CV. So why not help people out with that? Yeah, I think that's super important to point out. And whether or not people say, well, is this certification valuable or not? I have a certificate on my wall from uh, Portland Community College where I went to school, which is a trade school here in Oregon. And I eventually went back later and went to a state school and uh, got a degree. Someone might say, well, is a degree useful? Well, a degree is useful if you think it's useful because it is evidence that you did the thing. Yeah. Right? I went back and it took me 11 years to do my four-year degree and I went to school at night because I wanted it and now it hangs on my wall right there and it tells me I did the thing, I persisted. So a free code camp certification says you did the thing and it's verifiable. It's not something that you just click next, 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 and get a certification. You have to do the work, which yeah, I Yeah, you have to build at least five projects uh, that have test suites and everything in order to earn each of the certifications. So it, you do have to perform. You do have to apply what you've learned. Yeah. How did you find that balance, though? Because you could have just been a certificate mill and been passing out certificates like candy, but you chose to put you know, a hurdle in front of people, but how high should that hurdle be? You don't want to be a gatekeeper, but you don't want to be a certificate mill. Yeah, well, I'd much rather err on the side of being a gatekeeper, frankly. We've already kind of made it like free to use free code camp, but that doesn't mean it needs to be easy. It doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be a substantial investment of time and effort. So in many ways, like we, like, for example, we're developing a bachelor's of computer science 
program. And our intention is to have this be a completely free degree and to get it accredited. And uh, it'll take, you know, till the early 2030s to finish developing the coursework for that. We finished one of the 40 courses that we're developing. But, uh, and then it'll take another five or 10 years to accumulate the longitudinal data that we need to present to the accreditation commissions to get formally accredited like a lot of other university programs are accredited. It's a long-term investment, but we believe in the value of degrees. We believe that value is not going to go away. The only problem with a degree is that it's expensive. <laughs> There's nothing else that I would change about degrees. Of course, there are very minor things. Like, for example, we look at, we did a, an analysis of the top 20 computer science programs in the United States. And we determined, like, that's really weird that none of them, very few of them have an ethics course. Weird that very few of them have a security course. I think everybody should be learning information security in 2023. So, um, to some extent, we, we have kind of editorialized on top of what degrees are, but we'd much rather have a super rigorous, like the most rigorous program. Like, the, I don't know if it's going to be as hard as Caltech or MIT, but it, it will definitely aspire to that level of rigor because it's free. Anybody can do it, but that doesn't mean anybody should be able to get that certification, walk out the door, because the reality is we want rigor to be there. Otherwise, people are going to be like hiring free code camp alums and being like, Hey, this person can't even code their way out of a peripheral box. Like, well, how, how do they get accredited or how do they get credential through free code camp? So we want to make sure that their rigor is there. Yeah. That's super important because if a free code camp person alum comes out and then starts giving free code camp a bad name, because that they're going to draw a direct line back to the curriculum. So it's important that you get a certification and it means something. Um, so we teamed up, I work at Microsoft. You are the founder of Free Code Camp. We teamed up with Katie on the team and some folks on your side and came up with a foundational C Sharp certification because there wasn't a C Sharp certification from Free Code Camp. Uh, and we put this together. You can bring up my screen right here. And I went and I got that certification. I went through the whole process. It took me quite some time. And it was a really interesting experience because I was using both material at Free Code Camp and also material at Microsoft Learn. Uh, and Microsoft Learn creates these things called trophies that are basically like little mini achievements, like Xbox achievements, you do a thing. And then you integrated with them as a way of verifying and then testing my knowledge. And there were multiple times when I would get something wrong and I couldn't verify my trophy because I hadn't quite got there yet. And after you know this collection of trophies, the sum total of that represents the, the result here, which is that foundational certificate. I want that to mean something. And I put that on my LinkedIn and I want employers to go and say, okay, yeah, somebody knows foundational C-sharp. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. We're very proud of this opportunity to teach more people about C-sharp and to leverage, like, why not go straight to the source? You all have this magical and in my humble opinion, greatly <laughs> underutilized platform that is Microsoft Learn. And uh, when I go in there and I see all these resources, we have a lot of C Sharp and .NET devs on our team. And like, they love these resources. They use them all the time, but how can we bring them to a broader audience? And so it, it was just like the most natural partnership imaginable in the sense that like, you already have so much learning resources. We already have, you know, this community, like a million people use Free Code Camp every day. How can we, you know, get, C Sharp and .NET and the entire tool ecosystem on their radar because so many employers are looking for people with these skills. And so it represents like very low hanging fruit in my humble opinion. A million people every day, not every month, every day. Every day. So that's people that are using like the YouTube videos. That's people that are reading the reference articles that we publish. We, we publish full length books. Everything we publish is free, by the way. Like I published my book, how to learn to code and get a developer job. It's a free book. I even recorded an audiobook version of it that I published on the Free Code Camp podcast last week. So um, yeah, like a lot of people are using these resources, not just to learn to code, but for continuing development, uh, professional education as a developer. So they can continue to learn tools like Mojo, for example, uh, or they can continue to learn how to use the OpenAI API, for example. So we've got courses on pretty much everything. That's fantastic. Do I need any computer? Do I need a specific kind of computer? Do I have to get Windows? Do I have to have a fancy computer to start a Free Code Camp? So Free Code Camp can be used just like in a smartphone, in a browser. 
Uh, we intentionally put a great deal of time and energy into making the browser version work really well because as you probably know, like 60% of people on earth live off less than $10 a day. They may not be able to go out and get a proper laptop, but they most likely have a family member who has a, a smartphone if they don't have one themselves. Here in the United States, middle America, where I grew up, you can go to like a Walmart and you can get a, a Go phone, as we call them, like the uh, kind of commodity phones, but they work fine. You can install apps in them. And so we do have iOS and Android apps as well, uh, where FreeCodeCamp runs a little bit better than it runs in uh, a phone browser. But like we, we've published many resources on how to learn to code on your phone, for example, yeah. because that's a constraint that a lot of people face. You know, what I love about this and what I love about your philosophy is 10 minutes ago, you said, I want to be a gatekeeper. But what you're saying is, I don't want to make it easy. But then at the same time, you're literally making it easy in the sense of you're bringing the knowledge to my phone, to my Android. I don't need a PC if I don't want a PC or I don't have the ability to have a PC. So I think you're doing the best of both worlds because you're basically saying the knowledge is there. I will bring it to whatever computer you have, whatever device you have. And now you do the work. That's why I think it's a really nice balance between accessibility and, you know, gatekeeping isn't the word, but rigor, which I think is a great word you used. Yeah. And, and that's like a big part of our philosophy. Like FreeCodeCamp, we don't have the resources. This is a small charity here in the United States. We don't have the resources to have like a, a FreeCodeCamp chapter in Bengaluru or in Nairobi or in uh, Dhaka, right? Like what we do have the ability to do is to create free learning resources that anyone can use anywhere if they're intrinsically motivated to learn. And so that's what we're all about is helping the busy adults. And, and when I say busy adults, we really are focused on adults. The median age of people who use free code camp is 30. So we want to help those people if they feel the desire to learn to code, if they feel the extrinsic pressure, like I need to get a better job so I can provide for my family. I don't want to be working you know, the night shift at Taco Bell, like I, I worked at Taco Bell for a couple of years and like, it sucks just being called in in the middle of the night because somebody's sick and having to go work the drive through. Right. And people want to have some degree of control and feel some agency in their lives. And one of the best ways they can express that is through becoming a quote unquote knowledge worker and obtaining more skills and just having all these different career options. We want to help those people. And it doesn't matter if you're growing up in doing subsistence agriculture in rural India, right? Or if you're growing up in middle America and your family's been decimated by the opioid and, uh, epidemic, those are you know circumstances that are largely beyond your control. But if you feel that you can do something about it, if you feel that you have the determination to learn some new skills, you can sit down and you've learned everything you need to learn you know, on the internet. And much of that, if not all of that, you can learn through the Free Code Camp community in our open source, free learning resources that we've been publishing over the past nine years. But it's not just for beginners though, right? Someone might be listening to this or watching this or been, is participating in .NET Conf or listening to my podcast and they may have five, 10 years in, in the biz already. Should they just click away and free code camps not for them? We have a lot of advanced learning resources as well. Um, a lot of people like to go and backfill their mathematical knowledge. Like we have a lot of advanced mm -hmm. mathematical Courses, we've got a lot of courses on scientific computing, um, advanced machine learning. Well, I mean, we publish courses on all, all kinds of things like algorithmic trading. We just published that, I think, today. We published a four hour course on how to use Python to like apply, you know, toward finance, for example. So we're publishing a lot of advanced topics as well, but our main goal is probably to, to primarily serve the beginner intermediate devs because that's the vast majority of people. There are 30 million developers on earth, maybe. That, that's like a, a guess that I've heard from some different people. There are 7 billion people who would benefit from learning math, programming, computer science. Yeah, look at that. I see advanced C-sharp concepts, you know, strings in C-sharp, mastering link, there's articles, there's videos. This is all high quality stuff, algorithms juxtaposition between Python and C-sharp, code snippets. These are all volunteers that are out there bringing this knowledge to the people. Yeah, a huge portion of our courses are created by volunteer software developers and teachers, and usually people that have some combination of both skills. 
the idea that I can go back and like clean up my my knowledge. Like I know that my algorithms are a little rusty, uh, even though I've been doing this for a very long time, and that there's something there for me. You know, remind re refreshing myself on binary trees. When I went and did the foundational uh, C sharp, I noticed that it actually shows the the grade I got on the final, uh, and everyone can see how each person did. This is not easy, even though it's foundational, because there's subtlety to all of these things. So I used it as an opportunity to brush up, and and get and, and ultimately get that get that certificate. And and you know, and we're talking about maybe thinking about intermediate and advanced and how hard it should be and where that goes. Uh, and the fact that you have advanced stuff as well, I think is really meaningful. Are you finding folks putting this on their LinkedIn and getting jobs? Like, is this just a graphic or do you think that a, yeah. a, a company is going to say, yeah, I know free CoCamp, free CoCamp certificates mean something? Yeah. So we have a LinkedIn alumni network that has more than 1.4 million followers. Um, many of those people, like hundreds of thousands of those people have listed a free CoCamp certification on their LinkedIn. We, we have like a a series of buttons you can do on free code camp that will like populate it and create it. And then you can just click confirm basically in LinkedIn. And I, you know, go out there and tell everybody you need to get on LinkedIn. That's like a huge portion of the book that I recently published uh, because that is a great way to just get an understanding of kind of the, the competitive meta of what employers are looking for, what people, other people who are getting jobs are listing, uh, you know, the resources they're using. Right. So uh, did I say it was 1.4? It was 1.335. So it's not quite 1.4. But I think that's pretty good. I think you shouldn't be mincing. You should feel very, very excited about the millions of people that are excited about free code camp and that can get involved. In. So yeah, don't 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 worry about that. Yeah. So I just want to emphasize like free code camp, like we're a learning resource. We don't have like we don't work with recruiters, we don't have a job board. Like we we definitely explored all those things. And I'm not saying we won't do anything like that in the future. But for now, we're like fully focused on just teaching the skills and give, preparing people for the rigors of the job search. And so I don't have like an exact number of people that have gone through the free code camp curriculum and then gone out and gotten a developer job. But a few years ago, I did kind of like a, a, an audit of our LinkedIn alumni network. And there, there's more than 40,000 people that have gotten their first developer job after earning at least one free code camp certification. That's cool. And I think, again, that certification means something because it shows that you put the work in. And it's it's not just that you're going to do one. You're going to do responsive web design. You're going to do C Sharp. You're going to learn JavaScript. And then you're going to learn how to learn. And I know as a former teacher that learning how to learn is as important as the learning itself. Absolutely. Yeah. And Barbara Oakley has the most popular online course of all time, I think, how to learn how to learn. Um, Excellent uh, online course. If anybody's like looking to go deeper on that, was it hard to plug into the Microsoft Learn? You made a comment that there's this relationship, right? We we got together with you. Microsoft got together with you. Here's the blog post announcing the foundational certification, and we are putting a 35 hour C sharp training course on Microsoft Learn. But then you also go over to Free Code Camp, so you're kind of splitting your time between these two these two platforms. Have you done that kind of thing before? No, this is a, this is unprecedented, <laughs> but I will say that uh, it, it was pretty straightforward. Like you all have very well documented APIs and uh, your team has been incredibly responsive. Uh, shout out to James and to Katie for everything that they've been doing. And yeah, it, it was just like a really, you know, positive experience. And I know that people in the community are hyped about it. Because I sent out that email to the people who'd earned the certification, just like, like seeing if they take the survey. And like within hours, we had like more than a thousand people who'd given feedback. They're really yeah. enthusiastic about more certifications. Yeah. And it's improving. You can see right here, I just brought up for folks that may not be able to see this. I brought up a uh, an API call that you're making to go and confirm that I am, in fact, Scott Hanselman. And I did, in fact, get this trophy and achieve this thing on a particular moment. That's actually the back the back end, Jason, for all these different trophies will roll up into that larger certification. And then of course we can donate because it is a charity. This is a nonprofit. When we donate, all that money goes specifically to maintaining, creating, and expanding the free code camp curriculum. Yeah, mostly towards servers and uh, payroll <laughs> for our teachers. Got to keep the lights on because the teachers are the people that make it all happen. Teachers are, are so important. Did you, like this is only how long has this been? Nine years, you said? 
Yeah, nine years since we started Free Code Camp, and I, I, I was a developer for like three years before that. So yeah, I'm still very much a newbie <laughs> to the field of software development. I'm learning more every day. Is the weight of that like looking back and it's like there this wasn't a thing you conceived of it. Now it's not just a thing; it's a community, and you're changing lives. Like the karma must be really good, but also overwhelming. I try not to <laughs> focus on anything except like what's the next big thing we need to do. Um, I definitely like enjoy. Uh, like, for example, when I tweeted out about like, or more, more, even more impactful than the tweet was I shared on LinkedIn, uh, like a similar thing and uh, had hundreds of responses, kind, kind words from people. And uh, I just want to let everybody know, like, I do read all the feedback that you give on my posts. I, I do read all the email responses that I get when I send out my email newsletter each week. And I, I very much appreciate it. I feel to a large extent, like I'm just incredibly lucky, <laughs> frankly, like I don't feel like there's something unique about myself that put me in a position to be able to do this. I, I feel like this is just something that the world needed and I got lucky and, you know, free code camp got traction, whereas like a lot of other learning projects may not have. Uh, so I don't attribute it to like my own, you know, abilities so much as just like being in the right place at the right time. And I guess continuing to work on it, like continuing to say heads down every day yeah. and continue to build it out. I don't take any of this for granted. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I want to share with you something that I say a lot and see if it resonates with you that this idea of luck is super important. And I attribute much of my access to luck. You're doing the same right now. And I've always said that luck is opportunity plus being prepared. Yeah. And it seems like you're applying that formula to free code camp by creating both opportunity in the form of these certifications and preparedness in the form of really rigorous uh, coursework. Yeah, yeah, I 100% believe that sentiment. Um, and I think that uh, the more we can prepare people, just the higher probability, you're still going to have to apply to potentially hundreds of developer jobs. Uh, you're still going to spend potentially months and months looking for a developer job, even if you've already had a developer job. It's the process is very messy. Um, but obviously, it's worth it. <laughs> like, like, it's one of the most esteemed roles you can have. In society, it's not like being an astronaut or being a physician or something, but people do respect developers and they 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 do appreciate the power that developers wield because they've invested the time and energy in learning how servers work, learning how operating systems work, learning how they can get computers to essentially do what they want to do. They can think extremely sharply and they can communicate their thoughts very clearly to a computer, which is what coding is. And uh, I would encourage anybody who hasn't yet learned those skills, even if you're, you know, in accounting, if you're in marketing, uh, there are lots of people in the free code camp community that were like truck drivers, uh, that are now working as developers, right? Uh, one of our most prolific team members, she was working at a grocery store as like a middle manager at a local grocery grocery store in the Pacific Northwest. And she didn't have a university degree or anything. She was just prolific on GitHub contributing to open source, and, you know, we saw how much she was doing for the community and we're like, we should bring her on board. So now she's a software engineer at Free Code Camp, right? So it's definitely possible if you put in the time and energy, having a degree absolutely helps. You know, don't be a fool, stay in school, as Mr. T says. But uh, to the extent, like, if you're in your 30s and you don't have the resources to go back to school, uh, first of all, I applaud you for going back. You, you probably would be you know, just as successful if you'd not gone back to earn that degree, but you had a point to make. I, I It sounds like, it sounds like you really wanted to go out and get that degree, even though you didn't necessarily need it because you were already, you know, a fairly experienced developer by the time you earned it, right? Exactly. Well, we appreciate you. We applaud you. We appreciate the partnership. Folks can go to freecodecamp.org. They can also go to .net slash learn to code to get directly there. Go ahead and search for this certification. Make it happen. I did it. You can do it. Hopefully, we'll see more certifications and more partnership between Microsoft and uh, Free Code Camp. But for now, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Quincy Larson, teacher and founder of freecodecamp.org. Most definitely. Thanks, Scott. <laughs>